I've realised that we've had a really funny, weird run up to Christmas as a church. We've not been doing any of our usual stuff. We've not been decorating the church building. There's no candle lit carols inside the building. There's carols in the garden, and it's going to be wet. <laughs> there has been this year no Christmas dinner to prepare and sort. What I mean by that is in the run-up from about the beginning of November until now, I'll be taking lots of bookings, lots of phone calls, thinking about going and doing the shopping that... Um, 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 cash and carry, uh, going to thing, trying to organise, if we can, van drivers, trying to organise a cook today. There's been none of that. There's been no calling out for helpers to be on the day. And we've had no sort of lead up to Christmas as such in the core teaching neither this year. There's been no core Christian message, uh, Christmas message. Pastor David spoke two Sundays in a row on 1 Peter. Not exactly the most Christmas letter that I know of. And I felt last week the Lord wanted us reminding of our church motto at this time of year. Of don't be afraid. <clears throat> There's also been a number of circumstances that have thrown life in the air for a number of our family in the church. We've already been praying about some of that. It's resulted in some of us having to pick up stuff that others would have done. I make a joke about Andy, but, you know, tonight's carols in the garden. Um, I was meant to lay back and do nothing this week. <laughs> <laughs> to do no I mean, seriously, nothing. Unbelievable, so selfish. <laughs> I can only laugh now because he's at home. <laughs> I mean, I've even walked around. I was, uh, I was shopping with Joy briefly yesterday morning, and shopping in inverted commas means we just needed some bread and stuff. So we decided to go uh, into, um, into West Ealing, and I bumped into somebody from a completely different church who'd heard about him. I had to talk to him about, you know, yeah, it's fine, you know, selfishly, I had to talk about him. I'm not But the point being, Andy's name's been well known in the area, and so people have heard through the grapevine. But anyway, that's enough about him now. But, um... But some of us had to pick up stuff. Uh, John Batham is now going to take doing the Christmas communion on Christmas Eve. He's taken that up and said, I'll lead that. Great, brilliant. But it's been the unexpected. It's not just that. We've clearly had the unexpected of, of unexpected death in families. It's flipped people's lives upside down. This has been made their lives really difficult and sad. And I make no joke about any of them. I know I joke a bit about Andy, but in reality it's not funny. It's not been funny for the family over here. I'm being careful what I say because it's being recorded. It's not fam funny for a lot of us. It's not funny for a lot of us that family are ill and unwell at this time. But this has not been a usual Christmas for Greenford Baptist Church by a long shot. Quite frankly, the last six months have not been normal, has it? No. No. I mean, look where we're meeting at the moment. <laughs> By the way, if you want to know, I met with the expert who's going to be laying the floor this week. Oh, <laughs> oh well, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> meeting with his boss next week, who's going to tell us when they're going to start. <laughs> so he was going to get on that. Just add. <laughs> but at least it's progressing. That's the point I'm getting at. The floor, by the way, is going to be orange in colour and yellow. <laughs> Joe! <laughs> Please tell me you got that golf. <laughs> it's going to be green instead. <laughs> Do you know, I'd so love to make it orange yellow just to upset us so... Anyway, moving on! <laughs> No, it's not my choice, I know. The toilets were my choice, and there you go. So, it's not been usual. And do you know something? The first Christmas was actually not usual. The unusual happened. 
the turning of ordinary lives or the normal into a surprise event that will change the world forever. I could, we could do the usual talk today about angels visiting, using their usual quote, do not be afraid. Or we could talk about Zachariah, we could talk about Mary, we could talk about Joseph, we could talk about shepherds, we could talk about visiting Magi, and we could talk about our Lord becoming a little baby. But most of you should know that story, I hope. The Christmas story, do you know it? Yeah. yeah. Morning. Yeah. 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 Good. Yeah. <coughs> but I actually want to look, weirdly enough, at part of the story. Sorry. Do you um, um, see this one here? Actually got the Bible verses up. Look at this. There you go. Um, I want to look at Zachariah's prophecy. Or the Benedictus, as it's known in the Latin. Um, so I'm going to read it to you. I bet it's one you skip over a lot. Who skips over it? You read it, but you don't really look at it. Does that make sense? And we're not going to look at it too deeply, but we're going to just really look at it real quick. So this, so this was straight after. This was straight after uh, the effectively the circumcision and naming ceremony of John the Baptist. Then his father, Zechariah, was filled with the Holy Spirit and gave this prophecy. <coughs> Praise the Lord, the God of Israel, because he has visited and redeemed his people. He has sent us a mighty saviour from the royal line of his servant David, just as he promised through his holy prophets long ago. Now he will be saved from our enemies and from all who <coughs> hate us. He has been merciful to our ancestors, by remembering his sacred covenant, the covenant he swore with an oath to our ancestor Abraham. We have been rescued from our enemies, so we can serve God without fear, in holiness and righteousness for as long as we live. And you, my little son, will be called the prophet of the Most High, because you will prepare the way for the Lord. You will tell his people how to find salvation through forgiveness of their sins. Because of God's tender mercy, the morning light from heaven is about to break upon us <laughs> to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death and to guide us to the path of peace. Well, there was a prophecy. Filled with the Holy Spirit. Then I was thinking about Zachariah. I've got this thing for Zachariah for some reason, bless him. Old in years. Up to this point in his life, or should I say up to about nine months prior, his life had been fairly ordinary. And then within the space, space of nine months, he was chosen to be the high priest for that time. He thought he would be a very special moment, but even then for high priest, he got an even more special moment when an angel met him. And then unusual promises were given of pregnancy to his incredibly well-advanced in years wife. And then due to his own cynicism, his voice was shut up and clammed up for the nine months. And all the wives go, Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Not usual. But having learnt his lesson, his voice then returned upon that moment at this naming ceremony. <coughs> Again, unusual. We can read the story and go through it really, really quickly, but it's spread over a period of nine months. Well, it's probably even longer than that, to be honest with you, because they had to, to go and concede first, but let's not get too graphic. <laughs> but the whole point being, it did not happen that day, but there was lots of significant series of events that occurred that made his life incredibly unusual. No? You with me? Good. So, I looked at that and I thought, yeah, wow, that's the norm just disappeared at that point. How about you? Wouldn't you think the norm's I mean, for nine months, he couldn't speak. Just, if you can imagine that for yourself for a moment... <coughs> Let's, I'm going to take nine months just for the sake of it. But nine months that you can't speak. Not a word can come out of your mouth. No voice can come out. Now some of us struggle 
for a week of having a sore throat and can't speak. Imagine nine months of not being able to communicate. It's amazing, actually, and I think for me, that, that silence moment for Zachariah, he actually had to learn a lot very, very quickly about God. I think he had to learn humility pretty darn sharpish, hope in the Lord pretty darn sharpish. I think he had to seriously learn about the whole concept of, okay, what I thought I knew about the Lord has completely had to change. I think when we're silent, when we're forced into silence or forced not to be able to do something, not do our normal thing, I think that forces us to think and to reflect. So back to this prophecy. He was filled with the Holy Spirit. Verses 68 to 75, which is a lot of verses, is all about the Lord and what he has done. It is all about what he has promised before, thousands of years ago, to Abraham. And it is now being fulfilled. And what gets me in all of this, by the way, Jesus hadn't even been born yet. Jesus was conceived, but Jesus hadn't been born yet. <coughs> so it was truly a Holy Spirit prophecy. And all of this was revelation by the Holy Spirit. Not normal, yeah? Most of us like to figure out what's happening tomorrow by working it out practically, yeah? Who knows what's on TV tonight? Yeah, go. The Apprentice Final. The Apprentice Final. Mm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm this, I know this. So, by the way, tonight we're all out and at home by night. <laughs> Who do you want to win? <laughs> Sean, yeah, yeah, I, 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 I'm after the Sean winning. Anyway, moving on. If you don't know what we're talking about, where have you been for the last <laughs> <laughs> Was we happy with Stacey Dooley winning last night? Yeah. Anyway, that's Strictly Come Dancing done. But most of us know what's happening next because we look up the TV guide, don't we? Yeah. And it's easy now, you just got your controller. Oh, look at that, scroll through. Oh, plus 24 hours. I actually can go through a whole week. Yeah, I'm trying to watch something. It's a good job you've done it in my house because when you do it in mine, it speaks. Oh, I should play it in your because if you touch it, it goes. That would really irritate my wife, no end. Anyway, thanks, Mike. So, point being, most of us sort of think about practically what's happening in the future by. Because it's sitting there in front of us a lot. But here, Zachariah really didn't know. He went for some of his base knowledge of the promises of God that he knew as a priest, as a Levite. But even what he knew then had been flipped upside down when God entered. So this prophecy really was completely different. Some people see this as such a Jewish prophecy. They actually see this as a very political prophecy that was being quoted. But actually... When you look into the verses, verse 71, for instance, now we will be saved from our enemies and from all who hate us. You could probably get that as a very Jewish thing that they're thinking kicking out the Romans. But it's then in verse 74, it says, we have been rescued from our enemies so that we can serve God without fear. And as Morris puts it, it should not be overlooked that the deliverance from enemies is specifically related to serving God. Therefore, the song is religious rather than political. So, for Zechariah, his whole idea of following God had been flipped upside down. It had become no longer the norm, which had all been ritual, routine, ceremony, and all of that. It become different and unusual. By the way, I want to note with verse 71 and 74, I do like the fact... That it's actually about living without fear, so you can serve the Lord without fear. So the whole do not be afraid is still very much... I noticed that when I find it. Oh, look! Do not be afraid. And actually, when we do serve the Lord and focus on him, we can serve him without fear. Because the only 
being we should fear is? God. Exactly. <clears throat> and then we're meant to serve him in verse 75 in holiness and righteousness for as long as we live. Holiness meaning that we belong to God and we know that we belong to God. And righteousness as God's people should. And we should have full knowledge of these things. I wanted to just finish on that because there's two more things I want to talk about. Notice all those verses are about God. And then we get to verse 76. It's like having a little click up. <laughs> and you, my little son. Yeah, this is why. It's interesting. Thank you, Carol. You've proven what I'm, I was... I, when I looked at this, I thought, wow, I've seen it for the first time. It's all about God. And then you suddenly get these two verses about John. Now, I do not know about you, but I remember when my daughter was born. It's helpful, wasn't it? <laughs> I knew when my baby girl was distinctly born. And I distinctly remember, there's a number of things I remember, um, but I'm going to remember just these two things for now. I'm going to play it safe. It's two things. First, yeah, she sounded just like that. First, I was knackered. Oh, boy. Oh, I haven't finished yet, Carol. This is how bad it was for me. Firstly, Joy had selfishly taken 22 hours to deliver our daughter. Oh. I thought it was 17 until she corrected me this morning. I had to sleep for a while in the chair, in the room. I mean, terrible. My whole life was upside down. All those things did happen, but I am joking about it being selfish. But I was tired. 22 hours. I mean, come on. No, I wasn't, no. <laughs> I am kidding, clearly I was sparing the thought for my, my wife, who was clearly struggling. Two, when I held Keris, and I just, you can always remember this to the day I think I'll go, I remember us finally deciding that Keris was going to be her name, and then giving praise and prayer to the Lord. Now, at that point, you might think I seem really holy and righteous. But after that five minutes of prayer and praise to the Lord, all I could think about was, I need my bed. <laughs> Joy needs sleep. I can't wait to proudly present my daughter. Oh, yeah, and I couldn't wait to tell work I'm off for the next two weeks. <laughs> There was a chunk at the end of all of this, it was all about me. Here, with Zachariah, we have a complete and utter difference. His voice had been freed. I think for me, I would have gone, yes, I can speak. Joy, let me tell you about all the things I've not been able to tell you about my voice. But he didn't. Here, he prophesies over his son, yes. He dedicates this whole moment to his son of two words. But what he does in that, he actually dedicates his son to the work of the Lord. Not about him. Not about what he's going to do as a father for his son. Not what about he's going to, to hope and dream for himself. That how proud his son is going to make him. It's actually, I am dedicating you, my son, to the work of the Lord. I remember praying for Keris. I remember praying that she will come to know the Lord for herself. And we did a whole load of that. I can't quite remember it all now, but it was along those lines, wasn't it, Joy? And um, clearly, I'm sure a lot of us have all done that when we've had the opportunity to be their own, our own children or other people's children who we see as our children. We do these things. But here for me, got me, was this, 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 this Zachariah not doing the norm. Not what we would normally do with our kids. He actually made a real point of prophesying and praying over his own son. Not doing the norm. And then he realises what he's also saying. Because you will prepare the way for the Lord. You will tell his people how to find salvation through forgiveness 
of their sins. And probably for Zachariah, he knew what he was doing was giving away his son at that moment that he just gained a son that for years he wanted a child. Not doing the norm. <coughs> And then what skipped me is the rest of this. He then carries on again back to who the Lord is. He focuses on the Lord, which in our selfish society we don't do very well. We like things normal. Where we're meeting is unusual, I've said before, and it's novel at the moment, isn't it? Is it novel at the moment we're meeting in the Sunday club room? It's getting unnovel because I've noticed up until two Sundays ago we were filed out into the into the uh, uh, hallway with people. We were crammed in. There's a few blank chairs now. Don't tell me you're all coming to the carols in the garden. <laughs> but where we are meeting is unusual. For some of us, it's not what we are liking. We're just putting up with it at the moment. Others are loving it. Yet for both camps, we should be focusing on what the Lord wants. I like the usual. It's comforting, isn't it? Knowing how each day is going to go. There are times that the same old, same old is incredibly comforting. Yet our Lord is the Lord of the unusual. Our Lord is the Lord of the unusual. He has this habit of turning things upside down and doing the unusual. Said so this Christmas is unusual for this church. But my thought is what is God doing? in this unusuality. It's a new word, by the way, for the English dictionary. <laughs> and what long-term re re I had it pronounced this beautifully at one point. <laughs> Repercussions does this have for us in the long term, my brothers and sisters? The fact that we are sitting here 2,000 years later means that that first Christmas changed the world forever. When Lord did the unusual, it changed the world forever. The fact that he did that, the unusual, that is the reason you are sat here this morning. <coughs> So this Christmas, what unusual are you open to? What unusual are you open to? Carly. We do hope you've enjoyed and benefited from this presentation. To learn more about what the Bible teaches us and how to apply this to our everyday lives, check out our biblical teaching videos at gbcweb.tv.